Welcome to the final video, part six in section one, getting started. In this video, we'll be talking about scoping out a project. It's about envisioning the goal you want to help the end user to accomplish and making sure you have all the forms that that end user will need to accomplish that goal. You want to have the just right amount, not too few, but also not too many. It's all about balance here. On the one hand, you want to help everyone out there. This access to justice crisis is kicking people who are already down in many cases, and that pulls at the heartstrings. But on the other hand, you have to have a manageable product that could actually be finished and pushed to production to help anyone. You also have to consider the maintenance costs of ensuring the product is up to date regarding the law and any code changes for years to come. The first step then is to define the legal problem that you're going to help solve. This is your project goal. For example, you want to help people start a divorce in A to J land. So you have your legal problem and you have your jurisdiction. You've already narrowed your scope twice, only starting a divorce and only in A to J land. Next, you want to define exactly who your form is going to help. Not every form is right for every person. Not every person in that legal situation should or can use automated self-help resources. Going off the A to J land start a divorce example, for step two, I'd limit my project to only help people who jointly own property less than $50,000 and who have fewer than five children and those children all have to have the same legal parents. This is the start of creating my user persona for the theoretical person who is going to use my document assembly project. Ideally, you'd create one to five user personas for your project, depending on its complexity. Throughout the entire authoring process, you want to keep these user personas in mind. What information will this person need? What access to data or internet connections will they likely have? How much time will they have to complete the form? Will they need the ability to save and come back? Will they have access to the paperwork needed to complete the forms? Do you need to define a legal term or explain a legal concept for them? Step three is to gather all the forms your end user will need to complete the goal. For example, do they need a cover sheet, a notice of service, a sample judgment form? Make sure to include everything the end user will need to complete the process. You don't need every form for the entire legal process, just the forms necessary for the goal. Example, starting a divorce with less than five kids and jointly owned personal property under $50,000 in the state of A to J land. Step four is to define the variables. Highlight all the choices or answers that the end user will have to make or give you. Create a list of variables based on the highlighted areas. The variables list needs to contain all the answers the end user will be giving you to complete all the forms in your automated document assembly package. In part two of this section, I mentioned finding out if your organization had a variable naming convention and using it. If they don't, you should establish one early in your form automation journey. We have naming convention recommendations in Appendix C of our A to J authoring guide found under the Learn tab on our website, a to jauthor.org. Whatever naming convention you use though, be consistent. This will help you and others debug any issues during testing and will be easier for anyone who has to update your A to J guided interviews in the future. The final step in the scoping process is to identify the areas of the forms that may be ripe for repeat loops and those spots where the user may require an addendum because the lines provided on the form aren't adequate for what they're going to type out. The prime area for repeat loops is often related to children, expenses, or income sources. Reminder, repeat loops are when you create one set of questions that will be asked to the user as many times as they need it. These types of questions, related to kids, income, and expenses often, have the same information over and over again for multiple data points. Addendum triggers are places on the form that look too small to contain an appropriate answer to the question, like explain all the reasons you should be granted this legal remedy, and the court form only has two lines on it. Very likely your user is going to type in more characters than will fit on that blank. We'll talk more in the interview drafting section about how you can limit or accommodate this. That's the end of section one getting started. You know about the access to justice crisis and believe automated forms are a great way to chisel away at the problem. You understand the basics of document assembly, 
how an interview, template, and an answer file all work together. You've created an A to J author account and have seen how to move through the different components of the authoring platform. You're hip to the lingo and know the terms of A to J art. Finally, you understand how to find that Goldilocks of an automated forms project. Not too big, not too small, just right. Congratulations on finishing section one. You'll now move on to section two, the template.